Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Got an interesting scenario here for you that I want to I want to cover around dynamic segmentation of say some results with dynamic parameters. Okay, this has been something that um, I've seen asked many many times on the um, Enterprise DNA support forum, um, and it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, so members members have, have written in, in regards to this a, a, a number of times on our forum. And the hard thing here is that you have to work out what you want to segment, first of all, and then figure out a way to feed dynamic parameters into your formula to create that segmentation. So what I'm going to do through this example, I'm going to, I'm going to try and simplify it down so you can try and imagine how you might be able to replicate the ideas in something that you were doing, okay? Now the first thing I did was I needed to create a parameter, right? And so you see here, what I did was I created this customer rank parameter. And the way I did that was I created, I went to the modeling ribbon and I, I went and grabbed new, new parameter here, okay? What a parameter. And what that does is it actually brings uh, in a table, creates a table for me automatically, and it also creates a measure of the selection that we have made. So what I can do is I can click and then turn it into a card, and then you'll see that whatever selection we have here, I can get that get that selection into a measure. And this is the key thing if you want to do some sort of um, custom segmentation based on something, you need to have some sort of parameter that, that, that splits your your um, your results somehow. So what I want to do is I've got here, <coughs> uh, here I've got, so this should be, this should be um, stores, call, call it stores, right? And so um, I've got all my different stores here and all the revenue that we're making over this specific time period. So you've got to remember the, the, the context of the calculation is very, very key, right? And we can also, um, place additional context here as well. And what I want to do is I want to separate out how much of my revenue is coming from my top customers versus my bottom customers, but I want that top and bottom to be dynamic. And that's where this part of the equation comes in, right? I want it to be totally dynamic where I can change this and then I'm going to get different results depending on how we want to look at our data, right? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, use a function, uh, a formula pattern here to get my top customers. So I'm going to drag this in so we can have a look. Okay. So what I've done here, utilizing the uh, utilizing top end inside of Calculate, because you remember top end is a ranking function and it returns a ranking, uh, a table, like a virtual table based on ranking results, right? And so what I've done is I've said, okay, I still want to calculate up total revenue because um, that's what we do inside of Calculate. We still calculate up this core measure that we have, what, that we place in here, all this expression, but we are going to change the context in which we calculate it. And I'm going to change the context and only look at the top ranked customers in this particular case. And that ranking is determined by the customer rank value, which is this particular result here, right? See here? And I'm going to, within top end, I'm going to work through all of our customers, right? All of our customers, work out what their total revenue is, and then, but then only um, maintain the context of the top four because that is what's feeding into this part of the formula, okay? And so... If we look down this list here, you'll see that the top customers are generating this amount of revenue, right? And if I change this, it's going to change the results because we're only looking at the top three now, okay? But I want to, I'm doing segmentation here, right? I also, I also want to look at my bottom customers too, okay? So let's drag this in and have a look at the result here as well. So you see here that these two should equal to the total, right? Top and bottom. And if I move this around, we should see these results changing. Um, and because now our bottom ranked customers um, are the, we, we need to work out well, what are our bottom ranked customers based on 
whatever this ranking is here. So we've got to work out what our total customers is minus the customer rank here, right? And then look at only those bottom customers, okay? So the first thing we, we probably, I probably should have covered as well is we, we do want to work out how many customers we have in each different store over this particular time frame, right? This is just demo data, by the way. So, you know, it, depending on your situation, you're going to have data of very different frequencies. But simple calculation here is I'm trying to work out, okay, well, what are my what are my total customers, right? Because to work out, I know what my top customers are, but to work at my bottom, I need to go this number minus, minus the um, customer rank selection we've got here, okay? So if we come and have a look at bottom customers, check out this formula pattern here. So you see here that we're calculating up total revenue, very similar to that last one, but we're using top end here as well. Uh, but instead of just put, putting in customer rank, I'm going total customers minus the customer rank value. Then instead of just placing values customer name, I do actually have to put some additional logic in here, which is quite interesting. Because what happens is if, because um, to get bottom customers, all you need to do is change this to ascending, right? So you see, you know, in the, in the previous top customers, you just put descending. If you put ascending here, then you get the bottom customers. But the thing is, is that We'll, we, we will iterate through every single customer even if they haven't even made a sale here, right? And so basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to filter out um, customers who have actually made a purchase because I want to look at the bottom customers if they have made a purchase. So the bottom seven customers, right, for this particular row here. And um, I do that by um, going total revenue is greater than zero right because i think in this data set there's like 30 3, customers and so in this particular time frame in this particular store only 11 customers purchased right and then i'm ranking on the so this is just a so good this is quite quite tricky where this this top end is basically creating a virtual table but within that we are creating another virtual table to look at a smaller subset of our customers not iterate through every single customer. We could also, to be honest, place this into the top customers one if we wanted to maybe optimize that formula just a little bit because this would iterate through a much smaller number than say 3,000 customers at every single row here. But that's, um, yeah, but it gets, it gets the right result. So it doesn't, I, ha I haven't changed it in this case. And then we're ranking again here on total revenue and then ascending, as I say, to get the bottom customers, okay? And so that's how that's how I've created a dynamic segmentation that will change based on the selection that I'm making here, okay? And then what you could do is then you could turn this into a visualization. And you, the other thing you could potentially do as well is you could turn these into percentages, like percentage percentage versus um, total revenue. But I'm gonna show you how you could do that quite quickly without even having to create a measure um, as well. So you could create a visualization like this, for example. And so you now you can see um, where your top customers and versus your bottom customers are coming from. But you could also use the 100% stacked bar chart and you could see percentages as well. Right? And so this is giving you a really good idea of um, maybe some stores who are more focused on, you know, they are, uh, they've got higher risk because they're more centered on a, certain, you know, a few few customers, right? And so, and also, I mean, because this is demo data, it's probably not as realistic as you might have in, in your own. It's for very low frequency. But hopefully, I've been expanding your mind. I mean, you can use this in so many different ways. You can use, you know, similar techniques to segment so many different things based on a whole variety of different parameters. This is just one that we've we've gone through, sort of a ranking example. But, you know, you can really take this uh, very, very far. And it's just really your imagination which is holding you back. Okay. Let's finish off there. Hopefully you like this this idea um, and you like this technique. You know, there's, as I say, there's many, many ways you could swing this. So it's just a matter of, you know, just getting a good um, good idea of how, how it all works and how you can you know, especially use measures within measures, etc. Uh, and then you'll be away. Okay, throw the video a like. Um, you know, if you, if you got a lot out of this content, always appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of, lots of great content coming out to you. All the best.